Well, when I was back in high school, I had this art teacher that I thought was amazing, and he uh, um, turned out not to be as amazing as I thought he'd be, or he was, because he was one of those art teachers that he'd look at your work, all right, it's an A, move on. Um, and then I went to apply for a uh, an artistic, an art scholarship grant kind of thing, um, a talent grant, that's what it's called. They completely tore my work apart. I mean, they said, this could have been better, that could have been better, you could have added this contrast or done that technique. And I realized just how much he was getting off not doing everything. And then through a very long series of events, I became an art teacher. And it's my goal to push students to be better than what they are. I mean, whether they have been working for years and are a great artist or have had no experience. Uh, I, I want them to have an artistic mind, a creative mind. And so it, it really just kind of stems from wanting to be better than what my uh, previous art teacher did. I can understand that. When I was in your art class, I felt like you were trying to challenge us because when I first started out in drawing and stuff, I didn't feel like it was as good as I thought. But once I entered your class and started drawing it, uh, stuff on the table, I saw what was on the table sort of blend into my paper. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't want to come off you know, with like he was a horrible person. He wasn't. He was a great guy. He gave me a ton of opportunities and I did learn a lot from him but I, I wanted to I, I want to push my students beyond just okay and I, I think that his focus had changed by the time I was one of his students and he was moving in a different direction and as an art teacher I, I, I can respect that. I feel that I could be a better art teacher than I am now um, by changing the way things are. And I, I think I just caught him at a uh, time in his life that his focus was somewhere else. So I, I don't want it to sound like he was a horrible person. He wasn't. And he was a great art teacher. I just wanted to provide more uh, than what he was able to provide me at the time. Where did you learn to be a good artist? Uh, that's a loaded question because honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm there yet. Um, uh, all great artists, myself, I don't classify myself as a great artist, but all the greats are constantly trying to do better. And so I don't know that I even qualify myself as a good artist. I know other people do, and I know that I'm selling myself short and need to be a little bit more positive, but I don't think that uh, I'm even there yet. But where I went to study, um, I studied up at, uh, got my bachelor's at Morningside College in Sioux City, and then went back to school seven years later to learn how to be a teacher and I took some art classes at Iowa Westland uh, up in uh, Mount Pleasant. I, I think there's always room for improvement so if you don't classify yourself as a good uh, art teacher uh, I'm sure your students would classify you as one because I know I do because I can't draw so that looks amazing <laughs> to me. How did you learn? Uh, in parts where you didn't go for education, did you ever like study or practice? Well, that's what it, what it all boils down to. And it's something that I think that students need to recognize that you cannot learn unless you put that on yourself. And especially in the arts, uh, whether you're talking visual arts like my, my classes or performing arts or um, music arts, it's all, it all boils down to how much time you're willing to put in um, to become better, to do better, to uh, improve where you are at and keep improving where you're at. It, it, it's all about practice. So uh, that's the only thing that I can really put out there. There's too many, are, there's too many students out there that think it's I'm good or I'm not. And there's a whole wide range in between. And the goods and the nots are only differentiated by how much work you put into it. If you sit around and just doodle, you're not gonna be near as good as the person that has spent hours rendering a drawing or hours studying how to draw. Yeah. Um, you, you have to put in the time, you have to put in the practice. It's not a God-given, I'm putting quote marks up, God-given talent. Um, some people have it, but if they're not willing to, even them, if they're not willing to put in the practice and the time um, to study and learn more, then, that God-given talent is going to be so-so. Uh, I mean, you could be an okay artist and study and become better than the quote-unquote God-given uh, God talent people. So yeah, it's all about, it all boils down to practice and work. It's all work. Did you always want to be an artist? For the most part, um, I kind of started going down that path when I was in the sixth grade. Uh, well, fifth grade, actually. Fifth or sixth. I'm old. Um, <laughs> But w way back when, I was still in school, it was before I went to the middle school uh, uh, age range, I drew this uh, 
uh, pastel drawing of a deer I used a reference from the uh, local uh, wildlife uh, museum and uh, it turned out pretty cool and so I started taking classes at, uh, at the junior high level and then the high school level and just kept going from there so it's been a while uh, that is actually really insightful did you see yourself getting here uh, in life as a teacher here at Keokuk mm -hmm. at Keokuk no um, I, I never I honestly didn't know I was going to be uh, as a teacher because I went to be a, when I went to college I went to be a teacher that was my goal um, but to be completely honest um, when I got there I decided within my first month that I didn't want to work that hard and so I, um, over the course of uh, those first four years um, my girlfriend, who is now my wife at the time, we all decided that we were going to move to the East Coast, and I was going to uh, paint uh, outrageously priced paintings of sailboats for tourists, and I, that was the direction I was going to go. But then, through those series of lessons in life, um, I realized that one of my challenges was being disciplined in my work and giving myself assignments instead of relying on a teacher. And so. Um, when that happened, I kind of started supporting my family with odd jobs, and then that turned into me uh, realizing that I wanted to go and teach. I had teacher friends that were always talking about their classes. I worked with the local youth group, um, and I just realized that's where I wanted to be, was teaching a high school uh, art class. And so I went back to school, got the endorsement, and through a series of events, ended up here at Keokuk. So I'm glad you ended up here. Me too. It's a good school. Uh, I mean, we all have our faults, and Keokuk's no different, but it's a good school, and right now you've got an amazing administration. Um, whether you believe it or not, they honestly want the best for our students. Um, but you've got a great staff. You've got a great set of teachers and administration that want the best for you guys. And... Uh, I, I don't think that I could ever go, be at a better school. I mean, I wanted to teach at a different school for years. Um, I got to teach there for a couple years and loved it up there. Um, but uh, then I got the school down here, and it's amazing. They, they, they are bending over backwards to um, help you guys reach a point where you can succeed once you leave these, these hallways, once you leave these classrooms. That's the goal. And everything we do... Um, seems to be uh, leaning towards that. So you've got an amazing school here. I believe that too. Um, do you want your children following in your footsteps? No. And I only say that because I want my children to uh, uh, clear their own path. If they become a teacher, my daughter right now wants to be a band director, wants to be a band teacher at, at the high school level, which is great. Um, but if that's not the path that is for her, I don't want her following mine. If my kids want to be artists, great. If they want to be teachers, great. But if they want to be a lawyer or a doctor, or I don't care what. I want them to do what is um, on their path. Um, I, I, I don't believe that uh, my legacy rests on my kids' shoulders. Um, That's understandable. So. Uh, what are your hobbies other than just drawing and painting? I love to read. Uh, I don't get to read as much as I would like to. I love hanging out with my kids. My daughter and I, we uh, try to, COVID kind of got in the way of it, we try to make an annual trip to uh, Chicago to go to the uh, C2E2 conference, Ooh. which is a big comics and entertainment conference. So, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. I've met several artists. I've bought artists' work up there. I've met um, doing those kind of things, um, going to cons like that. I've met big-name actors that I just love. I mean, I met David Tennant. I've met, um, I just, I love doing that kind of stuff. And so my daughter and I do that. My son and I enjoy watching comic book movies together. It's just, it's all over the place. But drawing, reading, painting, basic stuff, cooking, I love to cook. What are your favorite things in life? Don't tell me that food isn't one of them. <laughs> I do love food. I, I, I do love food. I think it depends on what, how, how, how deep you want to get. I, I you know, I, I, I love good food. Uh, I am kind of a, not as much of a foodie as some people I know, but I do love uh, finding unique foods and uh, hunting down like the best burger. But if we're talking about things that I just can't live without, I really just can't live without with my family. 
they, my wife is amazing and uh, has always pushed me to be a better me. My kids are hilarious and serious at the same time. And, and so if we're talking about things I just can't live without, I would have to say my, my family is just one of them. I do love food. I do love illustrators and uh, looking at what other people do and teaching. I mean, I, I just love the work that I do. So uh, That is all. So thank you. Thank you.